and we looked at how lake ice records collected before the start of the industrial revolution centuries before actually um, could signal changes in climate so what we did was we uh, worked with collaborators to get a 570 year data set from Lake Suwa in Japan. It's a lake ice record. It's um, the timing of lake ice freeze on this lake in Japan beginning in 1442. Looking at something as simple as does the lake freeze or not gives us an indication of how much the climate has warmed. So in the first 250 years of the record, the lake did not freeze three times. In a 50 year period from 1950 to 2000, the lake did not freeze uh, 12 times. And in the last decade, the lake has not frozen five times. So just something as simple as how often does a lake freeze uh, gives us an indication that something's going on. And so we've looked at the drivers of what may be uh, in both Lake Suwa in Japan and the Torn River in Scandinavia and we have identified uh, warming air temperatures, increasing carbon dioxide emissions. Now, one of the important ramifications I guess of this research is that we've published an open access database of climate records extending um, three, four to seven centuries collected directly by humans. And the reason why this is important is because most of our direct observations of climate only go back 50, 50 to maybe 100 years. And so this direct human observation of climate allows us to supplement our understanding of how climate has changed to correspond with all these different records that are, that are out there. I think uh, projects like these ones, uh, because they're happening at an international scale with global collaborators, helps exemplify York's role in uh, understanding problems within global change biology. Uh, our students' work is featured uh, in, in this kind of research as well as um, researchers coming to York to collaborate on projects like this.